Hi there, this is David and welcome to the main characters of Dragon Quest IV Ranked. Here, I'll be looking back at the eight main characters and ranking them based upon their usefulness in battle during Chapter 5 of the DS version of the game. The ranking may be different if we look at the NES version since they are controlled by the AI, though I always just use the game Genie and controlled them myself. Also, even though the DS version changed many of the names, I'll be using the nomenclature of the NES version because I'm a crotchety old bitch and I hate changes. So, let's go ahead and get started. Number 8, Taloon. As a kid playing Dragon Warrior 4 on the NES, I really liked Taloon. It always made me laugh when he just did his own little thing, especially whenever he would trip and get a critical hit or summon an army of merchants to curb stomp the enemies into the ground. However, it wasn't until they played the DS remake that I realized what a turd he really is. He just has nothing to offer the team, he has no magic, and as a fighter, he's nothing to write home about either. He's pretty much just a weaker Ragnar who doesn't listen to your commands and does goof off crap whenever he damn well pleases. Number 7, Nera. As one of the two main healers in the game, she really should be more useful than she actually is. I guess that's because she's really more of a sage than a white mage. She has access to all the single target healing spells, as well as the group hitting inferno spells, which does make her versatile, but unfortunately you're just better off with either a better healer or a better caster most of the time. Her HP growth is the lowest in the game, and her only status affecting spell, Insulate, can be useful during some of the harder late game boss fights, but it's still not useful enough to bring her up out of the bottom ranked characters. Number 6, Ragnar. We've gotten rid of the trash. From here on out, everyone is pretty good and it's a race to the top. So Ragnar is by no means bad, he's just overshadowed by some of the more unique characters. Ragnar is your typical tank with an excellent equipment selection, super high strength and defense, as well as gobs of HP. He's great for bosses with his elemental resistant equipment, and he's good for mowing down some randoms too. His only real drawback is that he's so incredibly slow. However, he is a great candidate for carrying the leaf of the world tree because he's damn near unkillable. Number 5, Mera. Mera is the older sister and pure black mage of the group. She's able to cast all sorts of fire-based spells, from the all-targeting boom line, to the group hitting fireball spells, or the single target massively damaging blaze spells. She can be pretty useful in any situation, from clearing out random encounters with her powerful spells, or focusing her firepower on bosses with blaze most. For the bosses, one of the black mages is pretty much mandatory because of their mighty sap spell, which reduces enemy defense by half, and can be stacked so your physical fighters can pile upon the damage. Number 4. Bray. The old man is an oddball, because he's really more of an enchanter than anything else. With only four ice-based attacking spells, he excels instead in manipulating the battlefield, buffing and debuffing as needed, and he has the ever-useful sap spell as well as the buy-kill ability to double a fighter's attack power. He also has some more esoteric spells such as bounce and accelerate to help out your team and sleep to quickly disable a group of monsters. He's not as good as Mera at clearing out the randoms, but Bray is very multidimensional, able to help out immensely during late game bosses, and still contribute during randoms as well. Number 3, Alina. Alina and Ragnar are the two real dedicated fighters of the game, and while Ragnar thrives on survivability, Alina is much more of a glass cannon, with large chances of getting critical hits. She's the fastest character in the game, so it's nice to have her hold on to magical items if you want her to use them before the enemy gets a turn. More importantly than that though, are her aforementioned critical hits, as well as her ability to attack twice per round with the falcon knife earrings. This alone makes her a complete boss destroyer, and great for randoms too as a fast, reliable attacker. Number 2, The Hero. Truth be told, I went back and forth for quite a bit of time deciding whether to place the hero, but ultimately, I felt that he deserved the second place. He's good, don't get me wrong, but just because he's the hero doesn't automatically mean that he's the best. Your hero is able to equip all the same equipment as Ragnar, as well as his own unique Zenithin equipment. 
In addition to this, he gets both black and white magic. But for the most part, these spells are pretty useless until the very end of the game whenever he gets Omni Heal, which is fantastic. But you get it so late in the game that it's really only useful for the final boss. Whereas, our number one party member is useful throughout the entirety of the game. And here we are, number one, Christo. While Nero was towards the bottom of the list, Christo, the other white mage, is very much towards the top. Not only is he easily the best healer in the game, but he's a real competent fighter too. He's able to equip heavy armor and powerful swords just like Ragnar. But not only that, besides the hero, he is the only character able to heal multiple party members with his heal us spell and increase everybody's physical defense with a supremely overpowered kabuff spell. Not only that, he's also the only person able to fully revive other party members with 100% accuracy. While Nera can handle the healing during the early and mid game portions, Christo is pretty much mandatory during the end game. Well, that's it for ranking the characters of Dragon Quest IV. If you want to see me rank some other characters from popular JRPG franchises, please check out the video description for some links. If you like this video and what I do here on the channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon for exclusive videos and early access to my content. The link to it can be found in the video description. This has been David. If you like this, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a good day.